Okay, so today we're picking up right where we left off yesterday, um, looking at parallel circuits. So we've got this one circuit drawn here with one battery connected to these two resistors. There are two different paths that electrons could take as they travel from the negative end of our, our battery out to the positive one um, as they lose some of their energy traveling through the circuit. So some of them are going to go through this R1 resistor and end up back here, and some of those electrons will follow the path through R2 and then come back into our positive end of the battery before gaining that energy back and then traveling through the circuit all over again. So I'd like to focus on what happens at the sort of most interesting points of these parallel circuits, which is right at this intersection where some of our electrons are going to travel up through R1 and some of the electrons will travel here through R2. So I've labeled these two resistors. That's not what the value of their resistance is. I've just labeled them to so that I can talk about them uh, more clearly as we as we go through this. So let me redraw this little snapshot of our circuit. All right. So here we have our incoming current. And let's say that we've taken an A meter and we know that the current traveling from our battery, the total current in this system, is 10 amps. So that's what we know and we've measured as the total current um, traveling to this point. That's something that I'm just making up. If you had a real circuit, you would have to use an A meter or you would have to go through some other kind of calculation to figure that out. But that's just the number I'm picking for now. Now, what if we knew and we had measured that the current up through R1 was 6 amps? We have six amperes of current running up through R1 and then coming back into the positive end of our battery. Then you might already be thinking about how could we figure out what this missing current would be. So we have 10 amps coming into our system or to this junction point. We have six amps leaving that way. So how many amperes will be left over for this other stream of current? And if you guessed that it would be four amps, you would be right. And this is actually one of, if you want to look this up, if you want to um, read a lot more about this, this is one of Kirchhoff's laws. It's not terribly important to me that you know um, that name or know all of the sort of nitty gritty of his laws and the assumptions that they make, but they're really helpful assumptions for us to make and an effective model for us to use as we analyze circuits, especially at the beginning of our analysis of circuits. And that's that at any of these junction points, um, the current coming in, so in this case, that would be the 10 amperes coming into this junction point, are equal to the total current leaving. So this six amps plus four amps. And this is what you all found in your investigation of parallel circuits earlier, was that the current in those parallel circuits added up to whatever the total was. So there would be six amps traveling through R1, four amps traveling through R2, and the total, which in our case, that's this purple stream, um, was 10 amps. So those do add up um, in a nice and fairly, I think, intuitive way. Now, there are a couple problems on this work where, you're, where you'll have to go through a calculation similar to this. The math is very easy, but the concept is a really important one for us to hold on to and remember and be able to apply in, in future work. Now, the next thing that I do ask you to do is going to be using Ohm's Law along with your knowledge that you all um, have been building on and hopefully solidified in your work earlier this week about voltage drops in these circuits. So let's say that we know the voltage of our battery. Let's assume that it's a fairly standard 9-volt battery. Let's say that we have R1 is a ohm resistor and let's say that r2 is a 4 ohm resistor and then the question for us is going to be what is the actual and exact current traveling through this first resistor so i'm giving the subscript one to show that that's the current traveling through r1 and what we're going to need to apply in order to solve this I mentioned a second ago, was Ohm's law. So that's our V equals IR, or in a second, we're going to have to rearrange this for 
the current there. And I'll go ahead actually and just write the rearranged version of this equation already, because um, that's something that I showed when I first introduced Ohm's law. But all I've done to get to this I equals V over R, I just divided both sides by R um, to isolate our current here. So the special thing about parallel circuits, and you found this already um, from your Tuesday, Wednesday work, is that the voltage drops through each of the paths around this circuit should be the same. They should be equal to each other. And if our circuit looks like this, they should be equal to the voltage of this battery. And so what that means for us is that if we're looking at R1, the voltage drop for that one resistor should be 9 volts. So if I want to calculate I1, the current traveling through this resistor 1, the voltage drop there should be 9. And the resistance in this case for that resistor is 2 ohms. So that's something that we just knew um, we would read the, the color bands on that resistor, or maybe we read something about the product when we bought it, but we have that measurement. And so then we can figure out that this current traveling through that resistor number one is 4.5 amps. And we can do the same thing for I2. Right. So again, we assume that there's the same voltage drop for R2 that there was for R1. Those two resistors are single resistors that are connected in parallel to each other. And I'll talk in a second about why those voltage drops would be the same, although you all might have figured that out already in your investigation from earlier this week. But we apply that rule of 9, so this equal voltage drop going across R1 and R2. But then the resistance is different here. So now our resistance is 4 ohms instead of 2 ohms and we should get an answer of 2.25 amps going through this second resistor. Now, one thing to notice here is that there is a significantly higher current traveling through R1 than there is through um, R2. And this goes back to what you all had investigated initially when you were deriving Ohm's law, which is that if we have the same voltage, so same voltage for both of these resistors, same voltage drop, um, as the resistance goes up, fewer and fewer of the electrons are going to be able to travel through that, um, or they might travel through that a lot slower. Now, the reason that the voltage drops are the same through each of these different paths, so let me go ahead and draw those two paths that the electrons could take. You all practice this in your Tuesday work for this week. But... The reason that those voltage drops are the same um, is because you can think about that voltage as like an energy per electron. So the battery gives the same amount of energy to every single electron that, that it uh, pushes through this circuit. But by the time it gets um, through and it gets back to the positive terminal of that battery, it's going to have spent all of its energy doing whatever we wanted um, to do. So if we had light bulbs, that's spending the vast majority of that electron's energy towards creating light and likely some heat energy um, for that as well. Now, the reason that we would still see different brightnesses in these bulbs is because the electrons will still follow or tend to follow the path of least resistance. And so the way that I think about this is that if I had a waterfall, I forgive my poor drawing abilities, but if I had a waterfall and I had two different sort of tunnels or two different pipes leading away from this waterfall, funneling the, the water to different purposes, and I have this red tunnel and this pink tunnel, and those match what, these, what the colors are up here in this circuit. And for that pink tunnel, I have a significantly um, sort of thinner band or thinner pipe that those, that, that water can travel through each water molecule is going to lose the same energy as it goes from wherever this waterfall ended to wherever I take it, right, to all the way down to the ground or to wherever it's going. So that's like the voltage, the energy per electron that we have. It's actually an energy per coulomb, but coulomb is just a, a certain number of electrons. Um, so each single water molecule is going to lose the same amount of energy as it falls from the same height down to the same height at the ground or wherever we're taking it. But since I have a much larger 
sort of red area for those water molecules to fall down than that pink sort of tube out of here, a lot more water molecules are going to go through this red tube or go through this red path around our circuit than they will travel through that pink path, right? A much thinner band coming from our waterfall, not as many water molecules are going to travel that path. There's a lot more resistance in this pink thinner path than there would be in this wider red path. And that's the exact same thing that happens in our circuit, right? Around this red path, a lower resistance, only two ohms, a lot more electrons um, or a much greater number of electrons are going to travel through there every second than will travel through this um, four ohm resistor, this pink path around our circuit, because that offers more resistance. So that's why we see this trend of um, higher resistance gets less current traveling through that part of the circuit, even though the voltage drops across each of these resistors are the exact same. But that's the math. I think the I don't ask a lot of explanation questions in this work, but it's important to me that, that you understand some of that background for this math that you're going to be doing today.